MLA documentation, what, why, and how. MLA documentation is the Modern Language Association's form of documentation. It is used to show your audience where you found your research. It's also used to build credibility and avoid plagiarism. It is one of many styles of documentation, but all of the styles have the same goals. To build the author's credibility, you are the author, and to help you avoid plagiarism. So where should you find your research? One great place to look for research is the library, including the library's website, which usually has an electronic database available to you. What's nice about electronic databases is you can find information that has already been checked out. You don't have to worry about the um, validity so much. You can read it and decide if it's, it's a good source. Opposing viewpoints is a great place to start. One of the things you should also do is avoid Boolean searches. That would be Googling or using Bing because you just never know what you're going to get. Anybody can publish anything they want on the internet, which is probably why your professors have asked you to use electronic databases or books or other kinds of resources. So the process of um, MLA documentation is basically this. You need to signal in to let your audience know that the information they're about to read is from somewhere else. You need to signal out by showing your audience that you're done referring to the outside source. And then you need to give your audience the citation information so they can go and read that same source in their spare time. They probably will never do that, but you never know. Maybe they'll be very interested in your topic. So there are a couple of examples I've put up here for you. According to author X, comma, quotation marks, and there's a direct quote. And afterwards, you have a um, parentheses, page number, close parentheses, period. Note where all of the um, punctuation is located. And make sure you do that. It's really not that difficult. All you have to do is follow this kind of formula, just like algebra. Now the next one we have here says author X states, comma, and then direct quote. And then let's say you want to use a website. You're going to give the complete URL information in your um, works cited, but not when you're writing it in throughout the essay. So for this particular one, maybe it's opposingviewpoints.com. There's no URL needed in MLA documentation. And then the last one is, the last one is information to introduce the idea, comma, direct quote, author X, page number. There's no comma. All right, you're welcome to check this all out for yourself if you don't believe me. I have no problem with that. You can use EasyBib or Purdue OWL website or any MLA documentation website that is focused on MLA documentation. Now, the Works Cited page is required. You must list every single source on that page, and you must use um, them in the correct formation. If you used um, opposing viewpoints or something like that, the documentation is actually listed at the end of the article. You need to copy and paste that into your paper. Um, and when I don't know which way a certain kind of a source is, be it an anthology or... An, a newspaper article because I don't memorize these things. I just go to an MLA help page like the Purdue Online Writing Lab. So basically you need to create a title, use a title as part of your hook, make it interesting. Don't just say here is a boring topic. All right? Signal in, signal out, include citation information, and then go back and you can read um, I can go back and read your fascinating essay. Signal out. Include citation information. Paraphrase and summarize effectively to ensure you're not plagiarizing. Include a works cited page. Every book, article, anthology, website, everything needs to be on this list. Being able to do all of these things in your writing will show the world you have excellent critical thinking skills, so keep at it. This is a very important college-level skill.